بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر سوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ پرائڈ اینڈ پریجوڈس سمری ان انگلش ریٹرن بائی جین آسٹن پرائڈ اینڈ پریجوڈس از دا موسٹ فیمس آف جین آسٹن ناولس اٹ از ون آف دا فرسٹ رومینٹک کامیڈیز ان دا ہسٹری آف ناول اینڈ اٹس اوپننگ از ون آف دا موسٹ فیمس لائنس ان انگلش لٹریچر It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Its manuscript was first written between 1796 and 1797 and was initially called First Impressions, but was never published under that title. Following revisions, it was first published on January 25, 1813. The news that a wealthy young gentleman named Charles Bingley has rented the manor of Netherfield Park causes a great stir in the nearby village of Longbourn, especially in the Bennett household. The Bennetts have five unmarried daughters, from oldest to youngest, Jane, Elizabeth, Mary, Kitty and Lydia, and Mrs. Bennett is uh, desperate to see them all married. After Mr. Bennett pays a social visit to Mr. Bingley, the Bennetts attend a ball at which Mr. Bingley is present. Bingley at once falls in love with Jane and spends much of the evening dancing with her. However, his close friend, Mr. Darcy, is less pleased with the evening and heartily refuses to dance with Elizabeth, Jane's younger sister. In his conversation with Bingley, he rejects Elizabeth as tolerable but not handsome enough to tempt him. This conversation is heard by Elizabeth too, and she comes to view him as an arrogant and obnoxious fellow. At social functions over subsequent weeks, however, Mr. Darcy finds himself increasingly attracted to Elizabeth's charm and intelligence. Jane's friendship with the Mr. Bingley also continues to burgeon and Jane pays a visit to the Bingley mansion. On her journey to the house, she is caught in a downpour and becomes ill, forcing her to stay at Netherfield for several days. In order to tend to Jane, Elizabeth also goes to Bingley's mansion, but due to rain, she has to pass through muddy fields and arrives with a separate dress, much to the This day of the snobbish Miss Bingley, Charles, uh, Charles Bingley's sister, Miss Bingley's spite increases when she notices that uh, Darcy, whom she is pursuing, pays quite a bit of attention to Elizabeth. When Elizabeth and Jane return home, they find Mr. Collins visiting their household. Mr. Collins is a young clergyman who stands to inherit Mr. Bennett's property. which has been entailed, meaning that it can only be passed down to male heirs. Mr. Collins is a pompous fool, though he is quite enthralled by the Bennett girls. Shortly after his arrival, he announces that he would like to marry one of Bennett's girls. Mrs. Bennett boasts that Jane is already engaged to Bingley, Bingley and he should consider Elizabeth for this purpose. Though he makes a proposal of marriage to Elizabeth, which he turns down, wanting his pride. Meanwhile, the Bennett girls have become friendly with militia officers stationed in a nearby town. Among them is Wickham, a handsome young soldier who is friendly toward Elizabeth, and tells her how Darcy cruelly cheated him out of an inheritance. At the, beginning, at the beginning of winter, the Bingleys and Darcy leave Netherfield and return to London. Much to Jane's dismay, a further shock arrives with the news that Mr. Collins has become engaged to Charlotte Lucas, Elizabeth's best friend and the poor daughter of a local knight. Charlotte explains to Elizabeth that she is getting older and needs the match for financial reasons. Charlotte and Mr. Collins get married, and Elizabeth promises to visit them at their new home. As winter progresses, 
Jen visits the city to see friends, hoping also that she might see Mr. Bingley. However, Miss Bingley visits her and behaves rudely. While Mr. Bingley fails to visit her at all, the marriage prospects for the Bennett girls appeal, appear bleak. That spring, Elizabeth visits Charlotte, who now lives near the home of Mr. Collins' patron, Lady Catherine D. Borrow, who is also Darcy's aunt. Darcy calls on Lady Catherine and encounters Elizabeth, whose presence leads him to make a number of visits to the Collins' home, where she is staying. One day, he makes a shocking proposal of marriage, which Elizabeth quickly refuses. Actually, during her stay at Mr. Collins' home, Colonel Fitzwilliam, a cousin of Darcy, informs her that Darcy was instrumental in persuading Bingley to leave Netherfield, and thus he separated Jane from Bingley. Therefore, she tells Darcy that she considers him arrogant and unpleasant and then scolds him for steering Bingley away from Jane and disinheriting Wickham. Darcy leaves her, but shortly thereafter delivers a letter to her. A letter to her. In this letter, he admits that he urged Bingley to distance himself from Jane, but claims he did so only because he thought the romance was not serious. Moreover, Elizabeth's mother and her sisters had displayed poor manners, which he disliked. As for Wickham, he informs Elizabeth that the young officer is a liar, and that the real cause of their disagreement was Wickham's attempt to elope with his young sister, Georgiana Darcy. This letter causes Elizabeth to re-evaluate her feelings about Darcy. She returns home and acts coldly towards Wickham. The militia is leaving town, which makes the younger, rather man crazy, Bennett girls distraught. Lydia managed to obtain permission from her father to spend the summer with an old colonel in Brighton, where Wickham's regiment will be stationed. With the arrival of June, Elizabeth goes on another journey this time with the gardeners, who are relatives of the Bennets. The trip takes her to the north and eventually to the neighborhood of Pemberley, Darcy State. She visits Pemberley after making sure that Darcy is away and delights in the building and grounds. While hearing from Darcy's servants that he is a wonderful, generous master, suddenly Darcy arrives and behaves cordially toward her. Making no mention of his proposal, he entertains the gardeners and invites Elizabeth to meet his sister. Shortly thereafter, however, a letter arrives from home, telling Elizabeth that Lydia has eloped with Wickham and that the couple is nowhere to be found, which suggests that they may be living together out of wedlock fearful of the disgrace. Such a situation would bring on her entire family. Elizabeth Helson's home. Mr. Gardner and Mr. Bennett go off to search for Lydia, but Mr. Bennett eventually returns home empty-handed. Just when all hope seems lost, a letter comes from Mr. Gardner saying that the couple has been found and that Wickham has agreed to marry Lydia in exchange for an annual income. The Bennets are convinced that Mr. Gardner has paid off Wickham, but Elizabeth learns that the source of the money and of her family's salvation was none other than Darcy. Now married, Wickham and Lydia return to Longbourn briefly, where Mr. Bennet treats them coldly. They then depart for Wickham's new assignment in the north of England. Shortly thereafter, Bingley returns to Netherfield and resumes his courtship of Jane. 
Tosi goes to stay with him and pays visits to the Bennets but makes no mention of his desire to marry Elizabeth. Bingley, on the other hand, presses his suit and proposes to Jane to the delight of everyone. But Bingley is a hardy sister while the family celebrates Lady Catherine D. Barrow pays a visit to Longbourn. She corners Elizabeth and says that she has heard that Darcy, her nephew, is planning to marry her since he considers a bandit girl an unsuitable match for Darcy. Lady Catherine demands that Elizabeth promise to refuse him. Elizabeth spiritually refuses, saying she is not engaged to Darcy, but she will not promise anything against her own happiness. A little later, Elizabeth and Darcy go out walking together and he tells her that his feelings have not altered since the spring. She tenderly accepts his proposal and both Jane and Elizabeth are married. Thus the novel traces the relationship between Darcy and Elizabeth, hindered by the pride of Darcy and the prejudice of Elizabeth. The novel also presents a contrast between good and bad marriages. To Jane Austen for a successful marriage, mutual understanding and respect for each other are essential prerequisites. One should not be carried away by outward appearances are love at first sight marriage is a social contract and it must pass the close scrutiny of mutual understanding thus only Darcy and Elizabeth's marriage comes up to this standard dear friends pride and prejudice summary in English ends here see you in the next video take care bye Allah Hafiz